Hey everyone, Dale here with Pacific Sun Technologies. I have a great video to go over with you today. We're actually going to be comparing our solar plus storage only options that we have available because you might be surprised, we actually have quite a few options now thanks to the launch of the EP Cube Lite from Canadian Solar. That product previously was only configurable with backup and now we can install it with a storage only setup. So now we can offer you N-phase microinverters with the 5P batteries, the Solar Edge hybrid inverter with the home battery, or the Canadian Solar EP Cube Lite, which is a integrated hybrid inverter and battery solution that's stackable. So I really wanted to cover this video because it's going to really talk about the savings of owning a solar plus storage solu solution over a solar plus battery backup system. Now, at the end of the day, these options that we're showing you can have the backup equipment added at a later date. So don't think that just because you get it, you can't have backup, you definitely can but there's a lot of things going on in the backup side of the technology and we're expecting a lot better solutions in the future like meter collar adapters as well as entire electrical panels that have the automatic transfer switches integrated so it doesn't really make sense to get battery backup right now especially you have limited space in your garage or have a unique electrical panel location because just getting that solar plus storage option will get you on the right track and then when those products come out the meter collar adapters or the entire electrical panels with the automatic transfer switches will be able to come back and add that on for you and it'll probably be cheaper than what it is right now which for us most of the time adding backup is about four to six thousand dollars on top of the pricing that I'm going to be showing in this video. Now, for those of you that live in our area of Southern California and you're interested in getting a quote, go ahead and use the link down in the description below. We make the process easy and affordable for you to make the switch to clean renewable energy. We have great partnerships with Tesla, Enphase, SolarEdge, and Canadian Solar, so that way you can get the best solution for your needs and wants on your home. Of course, while you're down there requesting your quote, be sure to subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends and family so they can learn about the value of making the switch to a solar plus storage system. All right, so let's talk about the modeling we're using to give you some real world numbers and savings because at the end of the day, that's what's important is how much is it saving you? Is it realistic to your specific needs and wants? Of course, every site's custom to their own needs and wants. Every site has its own unique features, whether it's a steep roof or electrical panel upgrade. So it's really in your best interest to request a quote because in this video, the pricing I'm gonna show is just an estimate. But we did design it around someone that would likely own an electric vehicle and was consuming roughly 13,000 kilowatt hours a year. We designed the solar system to be a little bit larger than 100% of their energy usage over the entire year. So we're roughly around 115%. So the system should generate at least 15,000 kilowatt hours. Their usage is 13,000 kilowatt hours. And we're only including 10 kilowatt hours of battery storage. Of course, you can get more if you want it, and none of these options have backup involved. We will be using our top of the line panel. So if you're looking to get the price lower, we can look at QCell, we can look at Aptos, we can look at the Canadian Solar EP Cube. We have a couple different configurations available for you, depending on your exact needs and wants again. So why might you want Enphase? Well, Enphase is pretty much a leader in the United States with their microinverter technology, and it's a completely AC coupled solution. So each panel is acting independently from one another, and the batteries kind of behave in the same way in a modular sense. So you can start off with five kilowatt hours of storage, 10 kilowatt hours of storage, you can go 15, you can keep adding batteries one by one as your energy usage changes over time, just like you can with their microinverters and the solar panels up on the roof. That modular design gives you flexibility over time. So you don't have to get a big system right off the bat to plan for things three, four, 10 years down the road, you can always add on to the Enphase system in the future. So that's one of the big advantages to Enphase's configuration is that modular design. 
Now the Enphase battery features a 15 year warranty with 6,000 cycles. So that's a pretty strong warranty. I do dink them on the battery retention in that warranty, which is 60%. That's not a great retention on the battery, but 6,000 cycles does equate to about 15, 16 years. So we'll come back to that later when we talk about the Canadian Solar EP Cube. Now, Solar Edge is a hybrid inverter. It's a central inverter. They use optimizers up on the roof. So all the panels still act independently and you get module level monitoring just like you do with Enphase. But since you don't have a bunch of little microinverters, that does bring down the cost with the optimizers in a central inverter. It's not big difference difference, but it is a noticeable difference in terms of the price. They don't have a small modular battery. It's just one big battery. It's 10 kilowatt hours that connects to their hybrid inverter. The beauty of this is you're going to have better round trip efficiency. And what I mean by that is it's DC to DC. So the solar panels generate DC energy. They're not converted to AC with the microinverters. They just pass through a DC optimizer go to the inverter and then straight into the battery to charge it and then the battery would discharge to power your home. So that's a much faster round trip efficiency and I believe Solar Edge currently is like around 95%, 96% in that area for round trip efficiency. So you get a little bit better performance out of a DC coupled system over an AC coupled system, which end phase is round trip efficiency going DC to AC, AC to DC is around 90%. But that's kind of what Tesla's at too. So I don't dink them too bad in regards to that. Now, Solar Edge gives you a 10 year warranty at 70% battery retention. It's pretty standard across the industry. That's That's been the common warranty for the last five or six years that we've been in deploying and installing batteries. It's, we haven't really seen anything besides recently from Enphase, which bumped theirs up to 15 years. Now, moving on to the EPQ. This is a bare bone solution. It's a great solution, but you are sacrificing module level monitoring and module level optimization with the product that they have. They just have a hybrid inverter and it has the batteries integrated. As you can see just right behind me, these are the batteries integrated into the solution. The EP Cube features a 10 year warranty at 6,000 cycles at 80% battery retention. So. Again, 6,000 cycles, 15, 16 years, 80% is a lot higher than Enphase's 60% at 15 years. I get they're both the same cycles, 6,000, you know, but 20% more power or storage retained is a lot of money long term. And we're going to model that out because our proposal actually factors that in. They're taking in panel degradation from the REC modules that we're going to be talking about. They're taking in the equipment degradation, voltage drop, soiling. Our software takes into a lot of things when it's estimating your savings over 25 years. So we know you're going to generate less power. We know the batteries are going to gen generate or store less energy over time and discharge less energy over time. We're factoring that in with our software. So starting off with Enphase. Now, when you get a quote from us, this is kind of what it looks like. You got a really great thing at a glance. You can see your grid independence, which is basically showing you your solar to your battery ratio of your home's consumption. It's going to be really hard to get to 100% when you own an electric vehicle. So keep that in mind. But, you know, having a 63% grid independence is pretty good. And you'll see how much of an impact that's going to make. This is the estimated generation from the solar. This is the monthly the monthly bill that from financing it with us if you did a 25 year loan and this is the lifetime electricity bill savings before you factor in the cost of the system so as you scroll down there's usually a video you got the modules right here that we're showing off these are the rec alpha pure 400s we're using 24 of them with the end phase and solar edge system the ep cube does need one more panel they don't have as high of an inverter efficiency as end phase and solar edge so you'll see that the system will actually have 25 panels, but it's a marginal difference and it still ends up being more cost effective than Enphase and SolarEdge, which we'll be getting into. As you can see, we're just doing 10 kilowatt hours. This is what we found to be the sweet spot to give you the fastest return on investment is you just need a 10 kilowatt hour battery. If you get a little bit more, great, but it's not gonna make as big of an impact on your new electric bill, especially when you own an electric vehicle. 
And then, and then you have your system performance of what we're estimating, how the system works, your purchase price. This is all within our proposal. And on the right hand side, you can quickly switch between the different options we designed for you and switch between any different financings that we have available for you. Now I've narrowed this down to just talk about the 25 year loan and the cash option. Um, so keep that in mind, your quote might have some additional finance options available to you when you request one. So starting off with Enphase, you can see the net system cost is about $34,400. That's after the state rebate and the tax credit, which is 30% of the total purchase price. So that's pretty good. And you can see over 25 years, the lifetime bill savings is $112,000. That's a good chunk of change. And if we highlight over that, we can see the actual savings after the initial cost of the equipment is closer to $91,500. So that's a lot of savings. Now, a lot of people don't look at the 25 year savings. That's fair. They tend to look at the 10 year savings. So that's why our model shows it every five years. So the goal is to always make back your money, whether you finance it or pay cash in as, as short as time possible. So less than 10 years is ideal for any investment. And you can see that the Enphase system is just shy of break even at year 10. So if Enphase does make any price changes or if you switched your module to maybe QCell or Aptos or Canadian Solar, your savings would probably end up more in line with being under 10 years because we're using top tier panels right now. These are our top of the line modules from REC. Now looking at the old electric bill for this home, this was their electricity for their home and charging their electric vehicle. Keep that in mind, this is two costs in one. Your new utility bill will be roughly $45. This is under Southern California Edison modeling under the NEM3 solar billing program. And then the monthly payment on our 25 year loan, you're looking at about $232 a month. So to, together, $277 a month is about $100 savings. That's not too shabby. Some months your electric bill might be a little bit higher. Some months might be a little bit lower, like in the winter when you're using less energy, maybe you end up at zero. Remember this new bill at $45 is an average in all these scenarios. Now, if we switch over to Solar Edge, which is going to be a hybrid inverter with a 10 kilowatt hour battery that has 9.7 kilowatt hours of usable energy. So a little bit different than Enphase. It is taking up about the same amount of space from left to right. It's definitely a taller battery. It's a big, over, it's a kind of a thick boy in my opinion, but uh, it's still a really nice product. At the end of the day, you're gonna have all the same kind of features as Enphase, except you have the central inverter rather than a bunch of microinverters up on the roof. So solar production is about the same energy offset, but look, the purchase price went down. So having a bunch of individual microinverters does increase the overall cost. Is it a lot? No, it, it's, a, it's pretty close to about the same at the end of the day. We're talking about a thousand dollar difference here, but that does make an impact on your expense. So now your monthly payment is closer to $225 and your new bill is closer to $54. Why is it different on the new bill? Well, because the software between manufacturers is a little bit different how they work and then also how much power the batteries can degrade. Enphase has a 3.8 kilowatt inverter in each of their batteries. So having two batteries is 7.6 kilowatts. So they can discharge a ton of power to the grid very quickly during those times of the year where the utility will pay you two or three dollars per kilowatt hour to discharge the battery to the grid. Solar Edge's battery, when you have one, is only going to discharge at a cap of five kilowatts, even though it's a 7.6 kilowatt inverter. So it does affect your savings a little bit, as you can see with the electricity company. The lifetime savings with Solar Edge are about 88,000. And then if you factor out the equipment costs, you're just under 70,000. So it's almost uh, the same, but it isn't the same. You know, Enphase was over $100,000 in savings over 25 years. But at the 10 year mark, we're pretty much right break even when you finance the system. I'm gonna talk about cash in a minute, but let's just for right now talk about the financing. So you break even if you finance it on a 25 year loan with Solar Edge at pretty much the 10 year mark. You're pretty much right on that. Now, how can we break even before year 10. Well, you're gonna to have to sacrifice some stuff and that's gonna be the module level monitoring. And you go with the Canadian Solar EP Cube, that has the lowest entry cost. We're looking at $31,760. That's 
$3,000 cheaper than Enphase. That's a whopping $2,000 cheaper than SolarEdge. That makes a difference in your savings short term. So you pretty much save in 10 years, all your money. You've, you've made back your money financing at 25 years in 10 years with the EP Cube solution because it's such a cost-effective product that has great throughput, has great battery retention, and you can see that the savings over 25 years is just under $104,000. So not as high as Enphase because they have a little bit better things going on with their microinverters. You know, we got to take into account the solar production of the system. Now, what is your new monthly payment with the EP Cube Light? Well, you're looking at $214 a month plus an estimated electric bill of $71. Again, the software changes between each manufacturer and the power output and battery retention and all that stuff. So the EP Cube new electric bill we're estimating around $71. So yes, it is the highest in terms of the electric bill, but it is the lowest in terms of the monthly payment. And you can always adjust that electric bill. Maybe you don't charge your electric vehicle as much as home. Maybe you're able to charge it one time a week at work, and that'll probably curtail 20 or $30 off of all these scenarios. So then it in, ends up being a mute point. So in all three configurations, you're pretty much saving $100 a month when you get a solar plus storage option. And if you switch it to battery or switch it to cash, you can look at the return on investment. You're gonna find that they're all pretty much the same. That's what's crazy when you switch it with cash, they're all pretty much the same. So if we look at Enphase, six years, three months, you know, $86,000 after the net cost of the system. SolarEdge, six years, three months, the lifetime savings is lower on their battery, you're at about $63,000. And then the EP Cube, six years, three months, you're just under $80,000. So if you wanna have the lowest entry cost, the EP Cube is probably a good direction for you to go, especially if you have a roof that's pretty simple. If it's just one array, maybe two arrays, and you don't have any shading, I mean, having the module level monitoring isn't really something you're going to check on on a regular basis. You're really just gonna open the app, see what your battery is doing, seeing what your home's consumption is, what your overall production is. You're not really gonna navigate outside of that. Heck, Tesla just launched an old school style string inverter and they had to have done that for a reason because it doesn't have module level monitoring. And it's because you don't need it in a lot of applications. Sure, there are certain homes where you're, we're putting panels on six different roof orientations. You're gonna want Enphase or SolarEdge for those types of sites. But for those of you that, hey, my roof just faces west or my roof just faces east or maybe it's west and east or maybe it's southwest and then an east roof. If you only got a handful of orientations, one or two, we don't need all that extra fancy stuff at the end of the day, especially when you go with a high-end panel like REC, which has one of the lowest failure rates in the industry. I wanna say it's less than 0.001%. Like it's crazy low and highly unlikely that if you do experience performance issues, that it's related to the actual solar panels. So just kind of keep that in mind. But I kind of wanted to just do this video so you could get a good feel for the different systems and the value of just having a solar plus storage only system. Because you will see the savings is much better without the backup equipment. Because that does add that four to $6,000, depending on the system, is going to add about a year on your return on investment. It increases your monthly payment and it increases your overall cost of the system and you don't have that many power outages. I mean, I've lived in my residence, uh, I've lived at multiple residences here in, in Marietta, and I think I've experienced like three power outages in like eight years. Like, why would I spend an extra four or $6,000 to have backup equipment for those three times the power was out and I wasn't even at home in those three incidences. I was at work, so it didn't even affect me in any meaningful way. So. If you live somewhere with it where you have power outages regularly, I would say if you're having like three or four a year, yeah, you probably want the backup equipment. But if you don't, wait, because the backup technology is getting real, real serious. And they are making some huge changes to electrical panels, to the meter adapters that are going to simplify the backup installation in the next two or three years. So it's best to just wait and these manufacturers will launch products that you can add on later on to have home backup with 
less complications, you know? I mean, I, trust me, I love installing backup, but I'd love to just see you save more money. So that's all I got for this week's video. Hopefully you found it helpful. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends and family. Of course, if you're someone that lives in our area, Southern California, and you're interested in getting a quote, please use the link down in the description below. We can send you this proposal to your exact home, modeled out to your exact needs and wants. So that way you can compare the different solutions and we can talk about which one's gonna be best for you and your family. So go ahead, request your quote. We'd love to have you as a customer.